It's Sunday. Welcome to Steve's place. You know, a personal note, um, wish my uh, sister a happy birthday. Today's her birthday. And, uh, but anyway, i just like to remind everyone, uh, we have um, our conference coming up. It's getting here faster and faster. Um, if you haven't um, registered, I encourage you to please register. Uh, reservations should open up at the hotel this week. Tomorrow I'll be meeting with them, make sure they got everything set up. And uh, our hotel rates are like $82 a night for one. No, I think it's either $82 or $84 a night for one. And then uh, they add a couple of dollars for each additional person. But these include uh, breakfast, uh, Wi-Fi is free. Um, and uh, with, the, uh, with our social hours every night, you know, it's probably the most um, affordable conference uh, you can ever go to. Uh, these rooms normally, like if you're walking off the street, we're running you like 180 bucks without breakfast. So we're getting a super, super deal. So I encourage everyone to register. Uh, if you register by tomorrow night, I can still give you a 30% discount after that. You know, it's 25% unless you sign up two or more. Uh, so please uh, get signed up and register, you know. Uh, and uh, I hope to see. I see a full audience sit there this year. We have plenty of hardware there. There's going to be so much hardware. Some of this hardware you won't find anywhere else in the world. And some of it you're going to see here tonight on the show. So I encourage you to uh, get signed up. And if you haven't already, go check out the YouTube channel. You know, uh, we have, um, I have a new video coming out every other day uh, for subscribers. And then I'm putting up uh, about, you know, about a half dozen uh, members only uh, videos up every week. So uh, go up there, get get signed up, uh, become a member. Uh, the easiest way to do it is just go up here uh, to our homepage, Test the Tech Down Info, and go to the yellow box and click on the Test Tech Channel. It takes you right there. Also, f use the conference directories. You, know, you can. Go in the conference directory, and it will have all these different conferences that we have listed on there. You can just go to that conference, and it brings up all the speakers on that conference. Or if you know who you want to hear, go to the speaker directory. But keep in mind, on both these places, uh, it's a work in progress, and i got a lot, got a lot more to put up there. Um, and, of course, there's never enough time. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and bring on Karen. And Steve, Stephen Ross, Dr. Ross, and he's uh has what the Wisdom li Library. Yes, it's a huge library. And if you look in the background there, uh, look how big, uh, how many books and everything are there. That's. <laughs> I wish my place looked like that. Well, I have the books. I just don't have the shelves. <laughs> but uh, it's well organized, and he has some unique equipment there that you know you won't find anywhere else in the world. And so, um, who wants to do the introduction now? Would you introduce Steve? I would love to introduce Steve. Steve is an amazing um, human being. He has a library that is um, point blank one of the best around. He has been at it since you were in your 20s. You had a, an experience where you were going to be the top athlete, and instead you turned out being the top the library. And isn't that true? So, yeah, you do. 52 years now. Yes. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your library and then we'll, we'll, we'll then go about you because that actually is the umbrella of who you have been over these last years. And, okay. and, I, and I'm going to say also a gatekeeper of a lot of wisdom. Well, thank you for that. And I want to thank Steve also sharing. I, I never take these interviews or presentations for granted, so thank you. Uh, the Wisdom Library consists of 13,000 physical books dating to 1492 and 25,000 PDFs dating to 1510 on a variety of subjects, science, alchemy, philosophy, ancient mystery schools, color, sound, electricity, magnetism. Um, the idea for me with this is to have as much source material as possible. Um, I began really 
my quest when I sustained a knee injury at my university and was sent to the sports physician for the Rams, Dodgers, and Lakers who said uh, I'd either have surgery or I could never run again. Well, I went back to my trainer's room, found a popular mechanics magazine talking about the therapy in Russia, asked the sports physician, Dr. Curlin, if it would work. I was 19 years old. He said, no, that's holistic garbage that'll never work. And I decided to try it myself, which I could. I missed six weeks and that year finished fifth in the United States for 100 meters, planted a seed for me. What other things exist in this world that we're not told about in America? And what started as a simple quest and so <laughs> to be a lot of books. You're kind of like the walking librarian that has all of this wisdom. It's very interesting. Besides the philosophy and stuff that you have, even for Manly Hall, when I was looking and I had the privilege of scanning through a lot of the books that Steve has written about the work, you can actually see that a lot of the work is based on, um, it may be looking at different things, but it's all the one thing. So whether you look at sound, color, light, and we all go through Royal Rife, we'll go through the multi-wave oscillator, we're going to go through the yes. nemoscope and many other things, and then Shaw's work tonight. And the little cool things that you see behind him are these gadgets, which is the only Denshaw machine, the original one, that they were um, not able to rip apart. There's a multi-wave oscillator behind them and some of the original books of things. So we'll go through that. So with that said, um, I'm going to... Steve, um, Mr. Steve Tesla Tech, I want to go and show the PDF. So if we can go to the PDF right now, that would be awesome. Okay. Okay, so this kind of gives you an overview without all the busyness that he's got because all the things that he has in front of him are all the things he's going to show you and bring to the Tesla conference. So some of these things are the one of a kind. They're things that people have, like the original Royal Rife books with the numbers and the frequencies, which he's also going to have there for sale. Um, have not, it, it's, most people don't have a clue that they exist, but they will be there and they will be available. So with that, uh, you want to say something, Steve? Oh, no, I was going to say that uh, one of the, for me, the biggest misnomers is what people really know about Royal Rife. Um, I, I like to use the example, when I was in elementary school, there was a game called Telephone, where the teacher would speak in the ear of one of the students and each student would whisper in the next student. And by the time it came to 20 kids, it was garbly goo. And I wanna show very briefly today that there is so much misinformation about Royal Rife, what he did. And we're gonna be showing in just a few moments his original laboratory book of frequencies. So, Again, uh, I am co-founder of, of the World Research Foundation, which is a 501c3 nonprofit, uh, which partially this library is world research and my own personal holdings. So we can go to the next slide, Karen. I would, one thing, I want them to know there's a, there's a book you have in your hand and, and yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Because I think that will lend itself to all the things that we're gonna go and move forward on. Yes, that was my uh, first book, and nothing happened, but you can make it happen. Uh, in this book, I talk about uh, Bajor Nordenstrom, Swinging Electricity, uh, Cancer with Electricity, Royal Rife, uh, talk about uh, the acupuncture meridians being made visible, color. In there is a lot of original material, and again, I want to stress, I've been very blessed in my life being guided to materials um, that, and I believe me, I would accept copies of different things, but we do have a lot of original materials, and I've tried to include a number of those in my book, and that is available at my website, lesscomplicated.net, or on Amazon, and it will go into more depth. Um, of course, Royal Rife, most people are very, very familiar with Rife. Um, I was very fortunate, and we'll, we'll see how this shows up. Uh, I am going to put that up. I don't know if people can see it. Um, 
I had the universal microscope for two and a half years. The reason I'm showing this picture is over the years, I've met many people who say, oh, I have the universal microscope. Oh, I have this, I have that. And plainly, they do not. They have not had that Rife microscope, the universal. Rife built five total microscopes, one universal. Now, it's gotten so silly about Rife that one day I was in my office in LA and a woman called and she said, I understand one of your co-founders was killed. I said, really? I'm one of the co-founders. I said, oh, where did you hear that? Oh, I was at a rec room and they were talking about Royal Rife and how one of the founders was walking out the front door with the microscope and he was gunned down by the FDA and the microscope was stolen. And she said, did you know the founder? And I said, yes, I actually saw him in the mirror this morning. He goes, oh, the mirror, are you Steve Ross? I said, yes, I am. So much misinformation. Now, what I'm going to be bringing again to the conference, people have seen this on the internet, but this is the original photograph of the doctors celebrating, and I'll get used to this, the end of disease and illness. Now, within five years of the picture, all the doctors would, five, would claim they never went to a dinner party, never met Royal Rife. Here is the one and only Rife guest book. And again, for you people who like history, I will be bringing his original guest book with all the signatures of the various doctors. He kept the universal on his boat in the harbor. Here is his guest book of everyone who visited. Now, why am I taking a little bit of extra time here is to let people know I am very familiar with the story. We have 500 personal letters of all of the Royal Rife um, doctors communicating back and forth. And so we're aware of what's been happening with Rife during the period where the pressures were coming from who was supporting them, and what agencies were, were not, um, really were not interested in what he was doing, namely the pharmaceutical companies and actually the AMA, which really never put any kind of report about the microscope. Uh, in our slide, we're going to show this, but let me lead in by saying uh, we're going to bring this to this is Rife's original laboratory book, and it's got some, it's got some heft to it. Uh, and people will be able to see a lot of the original frequencies. Now, why is this important? People are putting out Rife machines, and I'm sure we're going to cause a little bit of uproar here. They have Rife machines with thousands of frequencies. 10,000 Rife frequencies. Well, that is very curious to me since Rife in 1933 only had 60 parent frequencies. So where did 10,000 come from? Including a woman who I interacted on the internet, she had Rife's love frequency on her website. So I contacted her, I go, you gotta be kidding. Rife never developed a love frequency. Oh, yes, he did. I said, where did you get that information? I got it off of a website. This is what's happening a lot. People take from people, from take from people, and they do not know what they're talking about. This is his laboratory book. These are the original frequencies that Rife worked with back in that time. 
Steve, you have that a book to sell that, that has the original frequencies. Well, I, only because, yes. Um, what I decided, and we'll get into this, is uh, this book, which is going to talk about the NEMASCOPE, but I'm at 75 now. I have always made those frequencies available, but I wanted to make sure they're in this book. Every single page of Rife's um, original frequencies, the various are in this book, which again is at my website uh, or on Amazon. Are you ready for back to the PDF? Yes, let's let's go back and it's going to be reiterating some of this. Yeah. And so I just want to share that one of these days there is a vision to actually make a museum. Steve has a vision to make a museum and put all of these things on display so you can see the original wrote notes and all those things. So what you're seeing here is sort of a mock-up of an idea. So if anybody has um, the extra place, the, the funding, the idea that we can bring all of this alternative quote unquote medicine um, that kind of, that's available and has been. Because I think what we can actually say that historically, anything that's a new idea has always been said or canceled out. Yes. These are not new ideas. These are ideas that are fundamental to the operating system called your body. Yes, yep, 100%. Yeah, so I think that's the marvel of it. So this is, again, just the idea of what, what it could look like at a museum if you saw all these things. Right, and, and there you see we just saw the dinner party, but I'm going to have the original photograph. And by the way, so people understand, <laughs> this uh, – this interview, I, I could spend uh, an hour on any of these topics. The idea of this is to entice you to come to the conference. So I may be speaking hurriedly and just putting a lot of things in, but it's to entice you, the audience. So yes, yeah, go ahead. We're gonna still be informed. And this is still the idea that it was a solution for cancer at the time. Yes. Yeah, and, and there's there's well, when we get to the back a little bit further to the nemoscope, we'll show you some of that, some of those images. So, again, imagine being able to walk in, seeing all these original things. So I, I think as we ponder the, the conference, we also ponder a vision um, that, that Steve holds for for a, for a bigger, grander idea. So here are the yeah. microscopes. So, so your turn, Steve. Five thousand two hundred moving parts. Right. Um, basically built this entire unit. I, I am going to bring photographs of um, pictures that we took uh, while we had it. So I, I have a lot of uh, photographs of the counter-rotating prisms, mm. uh, the microscope itself, ones that you will never have seen um, on any kind of other site. But it was... It's an incredible device. I, I mean, uh, having it in my possession, I was just in awe of the magnitude, the beauty. Uh, in Rife's letters, he would talk. Sometimes he took hours to focus. And when he finally would focus, it was a piece of dust. So here, this is really the secret. He heterodyned light. Heterodyne is normally associated with sound, but he heterodyned light. And even though the microscope did 60,000 uh, diameters, it wasn't the increased magnification that illuminated the viruses in their own color. It was this, this counter-rotating prism system mm. that allowed Rife to achieve um, illuminating each germ, bacteria, or virus in its own natural color. Here's the one thing that always fascinated me that you, you showed me one time. It was that these viruses and illnesses had a, had a color. And so he was able to see that just like on the electric light spectrum, when light comes down, we just think, oh, right. it's, but it isn't. We're really looking at the light spectrum. Exactly. And even the Smithsonian Institute, and I have their original publication, um, and there it is. And now if you go, go, go back. Run back, okay. At, at the bottom left is the original, there's an article in the Smithsonian Institute. And I have to laugh because it says, Roy arrived for many years who has far surpassed the theoretical limitations of, how do you surpass the limitation? 
They didn't even know what to write. A limitation is a limitation, but Rife's unique capabilities transcended the science. Of the day. <laughs> yes, of that day, yep. You know, it's funny to me, even what you even talk to nurses sometimes and you go, your body's electric and they kind of go, how do you come up with that? And you just go, well, don't you jumpstart the heart? Don't you kind of every time you, you everything you measure is electrical? I mean, I, what determines death, heartbeat and brain waves? Yeah, that's electrical. Yeah, they're all waves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, in our quick little jaunt here, let's introduce the Nemoscope. The Nemoscope was built by Elmer P. Nemus in the 1950s. It was 60 times more powerful than the Rife microscope, 60 times. It did 3.5 million magnification, um, and he could watch specimens live. Now, on the at the bottom right, you see the virus of cancer, three point, there it is, 3.5 million magnification. Nobody has really seen the virus like that. Uh, going over to the left bottom, you're looking at energy emanating from specimens. You're, you're looking at actual energy, um, which the human eye just can't see. That nemoscope book, um, I will be bringing, and let me just get this right here. This is Nemesis book, as you see in the picture. And the very first page, of course, is the classic picture that he took. And that is in one second. Oh. atoms and the energy field holding the atoms together. Now, I have read the internet and physicists, scientists go, you know what? That picture is computer generated. I've got news for those people. To my knowledge, computers came out in 1957 and those were not state of the art. These pictures are from the early 1950s way before there were computers that would have altered what you just saw there. This book, and anybody who page through here, um, where you can see magnetic flux lines, you can actually see the north and south pole of, of magnets, the spiral energy. This too, I, I will have at the conference, uh, where people closely guarded will be able to look through this book, but um, this and Rife does not exist anymore. And it is because of Steve and Karen that I am bringing this because um, I have done demonstrations, I've done shows, but I have not brought these type of materials where people can actually physically see them. Thank you, Steve. I think I've turned to the other page because I think the one thing people have to understand about oh, this yeah, is beautiful. Now on yeah. the left is when when a specimen is it's an this is an iron nucleid. And when it is functioning or any uh, substance is functioning in its full life, it would look like this as energy dissipates from a specimen from something live, it starts looking like the right. The fields start collapsing upon themselves. You, you can actually see the death here. And again, these are 3.5 million magnification. Wow. And I, I know this is the first image that anybody saw of the atom. Well, and here is something. Uh, this was science. And you can see, I apologize, I'm used to the um, first photos of the atom. It was the article. And this science magazine, uh, again, was from 1964. So a lot of this was, again, well before computer generation. Those were the actual photographs, yes. 
Yeah, it's it's and one thing I always thought was very interesting. What I found when you see this, it's triangulated, and then when you look at light, it triangulates. What yes. does do? It triangulates. So all of the yeah. elements are going from a recycling system from one denser to lighter structure, but they all triangulate. That's why. Yes. That so it's that's when you begin to see that there's a a structure within the universe that's consistent. It also makes all the fractals. And it actually is the beginning of all platonic solids. And even it's the same beginning for chemistry. So this is the foundation of all of it. You're looking at it right now. And it's just so beautiful. Now, there is a polio virus taken at 3.5 million. Now, this is interesting. On the right, you're looking at a piece of latex where you're looking at the space between the elements to the lower, lower you're looking through a normal electron microscope. Here. So, yeah. So the electron microscope is just showing black and white shadows, but the nemoscope was showing the, the space between the atoms. That's I know it's very unbelievable for a lot of people. We can only go by, by the date that they have this. Um, and again, this, this is Nemesis presentation book. So, Steve, what happened to the Nemoscope? The Nemoscope was going to be, was being repaired at a camera shop in Studio City, California, when uh, it was stolen. And the reason, this, this is fascinating because here is Magnets Magazine. And in this, People may recognize the editor was Tom Valentine. And Tom Valentine said in another article, the nemoscope made the Rife microscope look like a tinker toy. But I've taken this out because Betty Lee Morales had right, uh, excuse me, Nemesis presentation book away from the microscope. And that is this book, the one that she was holding in this article that I'll be bringing to the conference. What? Oh, no, that's the other thing. I just, okay, never mind. Now we, there's another really interesting device that actually is known for, for healing. Yes, it's the multi-wave oscillator built by George Lukowski uh, back in the 30s. Uh, Lukowski was just a brilliant engineer and other scientists of his day um, gave him a tremendous amount of compliments. His multiple wave oscillator put out frequencies. Uh, I have my multiple wave, the antenna, each of the different rings put out a frequency that was conducive to cells, organs, and different aspects of the body. Now, the original Lukowski machine had two antennas which were in between. My multi-wave oscillator has one antenna and fits in this briefcase. I have used this since 1986 and worked with hundreds of people with that multiple wave, which has worked just as well. Now, for demonstration purposes only, because not being an MD, I certainly wouldn't treat people, but I have seen a multitude of difficulties reversed, such as ALS, MS, Parkinson's, cancer tumors, many, many health challenges, which are all electromagnetic related. Either the frequencies are not going through the sheets, the nerves, these devices that we have here don't have to go through the circulatory system, not even the nervous system all the time. They are projected right into the body. The multi-wave oscillator in his book, Lukowski's The Secret of Life, is a must. Anybody who's in this field, just the theories that Lukowski puts forward. Now, what happened to Lukowski? He came out with his work when the Nazis were inv uh, invading France. He ended up going um, to New York 
And basically Bellevue Hospital started cleaning out the patients. The multiple wave oscillator is not well known because Lukowski was killed in an automobile accident actually in front of the hospital. And it's not disapproved by the uh, FDA, it's not approved. But I will tell you this, my journeys all throughout Europe, virtually every physicist that I know had a Lukowski antenna, all different sizes, but they all recognized with its Tesla coil in here, just how valuable and important it is. Now, uh, my little briefcase, I am not gonna be turning these on, but I will certainly allow people uh, to see and understand um, how these work, how this works. Steve, can you explain more just a little bit how the body is electric? How, how, how would it actually penetrate and what would it do to an electrical system within the body? Well, again, um, heartbeat and brain waves, they're all electrical. We've got George Cryle of the Cleveland Clinic in the 20s, Harold Saxton Burr, Yale University. All of these top medical people, professors, demonstrated that we are electrical. When a tumor is growing, Dr. Nordenstrom shows in his book, Dr. Nordenstrom was the chairman of the Nobel Assembly the discoverer of needle biopsy, one of the top radiologists, but his theory of shrinking cancer tumors with electricity, he showed the electrical potential changes as a tumor is growing. And so uh, what he's, his articles that he's written, the body is electrical. Everybody used to think that it's chemical first, leading to electrical. It is not. It is electrical activities that turn on the various mechanisms in the body. Everything is electrical. And some of these giants, like I said, Harold Saxton Burr, George Cryle, their work in the 20s and 30s before the advent of the internet is so profound. And I've met a lot of people who we're not aware of them. And this is another difficulty. It's easy for a librarian to compare here in different ages because I have books going back a, a long period. But too many people today are reinventing the wheel. Yeah, They think, oh my God, I made this incredible discovery. And when they come and I meet them, I go, oh, that was actually done 80 years ago. That was done 150 years ago. And I'm not kidding with, with those years, because yeah. in the late 1880s, there was a lot of work working with magnetism, working with electricity. So too often, uh, people don't really do their homework. But I'm not putting anybody down. Uh, I think anytime somebody makes an achievement, um, it's to be noted. Yeah. So Steve, take us back to the end. And we can so she, see Steve here um, with his multi-wave oscillator. And he's actually lightening, he's lighting up the light bulb. Yes. <laughs> there you go. It, it's plugged in. And even though there's rings, see, our, our unit is a little different. Nikola Tesla wrote an article about human energy. And with the human energy, um, what we did was we have an attachment that this plugs into the multiple wave oscillator and I could put the frequency and there was no damage. I could put it on my eye while it was turned on. This um, really intensifies more to a particular point where you are looking to put energy in. And it's very Interesting to me, as I've used this in conjunction with my multiple wave that was built for me uh, actually in 1985, uh, I can tell with this and with the other attachment, when I'm going down a person's spine where the electrical 
conductivity mm -hmm. has lessened, and that's where there's a problem, a break in the current. And these devices are meant to reestablish that frequency. It's, it's, it, it's any, even energy healers can actually go down the spine. Look at, me, look at that smile after the energy, see? Before, <laughs> that, before that picture, I was scowling. But no, now, you weren't. No, you weren't because I took it. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, I've never seen you scowl. So there you go. I had to make it more dramatic. <laughs> but you see the little electricity coming off of it? You were yeah. showing me that. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, I've had the privilege of going to the library and looking at the, all these gadgets in person. So when I was there, I took lots and lots of pictures. And uh, we did a magazine issue regularly. And, and of course, the little demonstration I like doing is when it's not even plugged in, we put this in front of the antenna and it will light up, demonstrating that, of course, the frequency is going from the antenna and lighting up the bulb. But boy, is it exciting when I when I take a fluorescent bulb and stand in front of this and the people in the eyes go, ooh, well, the Tesla people, people are much more refined and know all of these things. But the frequency is going from that unit. We do not, which a lot of these even have to touch the body. It's going right to the source right to the cells it needs to go to. Okay, this one. You mentioned um, these two gentlemen. Or they, they're Tesla, still Tesla I went to school with, he and I went to junior high. No, no. <laughs> we know better than that. You're too yeah, much there, there, there is Harold Saxton Burr, yep, the, the professor there, and George Kreil. Their work, I, I can't state enough, their work in the 20s and 30s is so profound. The, these individuals, especially if you take Harold Saxton Burr, he, by measuring the electrical potential along the body, could see where a tumor was going to grow before it even appeared there. Before a tumor appeared on the body, they knew exactly where it was going to go because the electrical potential had wow. changed at a, at a particular spot and the tumor grew exactly there. I mean, their work is phenomenal. Yale so, University. Th th there's a, so I'm gonna skip this one because we did that, right? Yes. But the, he also said something that does, it deals with plants, animals, and all living things, because all living things uh, are- and, and before you skip, the red book in the middle there, A Bipolar Theory of the Living Process, is again what you and I are talking about, Karen, and, and you reiterated. It's electrical. And these people spent 40 years doing all their research, documenting, proving. Now, the reason it's interesting with Kryle, Kryle has- page after page after page on surgical shock. That's what he was known for. But when he came out with this bipolar theory and electricity, nobody really picked it up and he didn't push. And I believe it was because a lot of these physicists did not want to lose their standing and have a lot of controversy by going into the area that we are with the electricity and the magnetism. But Kreil and Harold Saxton Burr, very important. So would, would it, just because I can ask, with the bipolar, does that have to do with an even, uneven sort of balance in your own body of your own? Right. Yes, okay. it, it, it's the neg positive and negative. Yeah, so it, it, would you be driving one way or the other? You'd be flipping? It, it's everything. If one is out of balance, this is where Lukowski was just so brilliant. <clears throat> People can be in the midst of the worst um, ca catastrophes as far as viruses and bacteria, but they don't get affected. It is because their frequency in their body is higher than the invading whatever it is, virus or, or bacteria. And as long as it is, you, can ne you, you never will get ill. But as soon as it goes down because of stress, uh, whatever somebody goes through, 
and your frequency goes down and the invader is more, that is when we catch things. So these people were all talking about keeping the body at the highest possible frequency. And you do that by stimulating your electromagnetic fields, either by sound, by color, by chanting, by meditation. Ground and eating, yeah. and eating and eating the right food that gives food. Yeah. Is, if you and eat even, food even, yeah, and the music, all of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's that I think we have we have um, Robert Slovak, who's water expert. He's coming to talk about the gut and the and the the terrain and how how important it is. And that's kind of also the thing that you're talking about. So this one's kind of a fascinating one because this is the proof you said years ago about the acupuncture meridians. Yes, uh, Dr. Duras and Averna Jewell are or were aerospace nuclear medical doctors who wanted to discover whether the acupuncture meridians actually existed. So they took radioactive isotope technetium-99 and CAT scan cameras, and they would inject at various points of the body. Now, uh, to my right, there's just the dot you see. That was the technetium, yep, at a non-acupuncture point or meridian. So what happened? It didn't go anywhere. But when they injected at an acupuncture point on a meridian, you see the line going up. Now, I was with them. They were both on my advisory board for world research before they passed away. And I was at Necker Hospital watching what they were doing. And the other slide, um, what, what it did was it's going from the ankle to the knee. And so, from the ankle to the knee, if you go back, are you able to go back yeah. one? Can you pick it, go back to the, the big? Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, there you go. So those are from the ankle to the knee following the meridian system perfectly. And what they could determine was how the acupuncture meridian, um, if it's open or it's slightly closed. Does now. Yes. These, these medical doctors were great because here's what they would do. They would do a regular surgery. Then they would take these tests to determine whether the organ they worked on was reestablished with its energy flow. So they combined the acupuncture with their surgery. Now, the incredible part, they validated the ancient 5,000 year old charts, 100%. So, Karen, how did those people do it 5,000 years ago? They didn't have scientific equipment, but they did have intuition. They did have the ability to see. And that is what I'm going to be talking about in my presentation. I'm not only going to be talking about these, I'm going to be talking about what's beyond all of these devices. And what came before these devices? Mm. Here we go. This, uh, is, yeah. this is a frustrating story. <laughs> yeah, this is very frustrating because this is Dinsha Gadiali and um, his spectrochrome system. He was a Tibetan yogi. There were 500 US doctors using color therapy until the AMA said any doctor using color is going to lose their license. And so the doctors were in fear. Now, the three volume set up there by order of the um, court were to be burned. And in Camden, New Jersey, those color books, similar except those, were burned. Now, here is a picture of Marshall's. U.S. Marshals, according to the court order, seizing every one of these Din Shah machines out of people's homes and destroying them. They didn't get this one. They didn't get one that's in the Quack Museum because they love saying it's quackery. It is not quackery. Color therapy is very important. And I have worked with more than 200 people, including my own father, who is supposed to be a quadriplegic. 
according to Kaiser Permanente and my father checked into Kaiser Permanente in 1984 with back spasms. They used an unsterilized needle in my dad's spine. He ended up, according to these records, as a quadriplegic. They did their um, surgery after they told my mom they were very sorry. Uh, there's nothing more they could do. They're going to start quadriplegic training. Well, I went in to the hospital. Now, this machine is too old, but I hope everyone can see. Here is a makeshift color device. I will bring this also where we put the 12 different colors Dinshaw recommended. Now, this is not me talking. This is Kaiser Permanente, Dr. Mahomar. The patient has made a tremendous recovery from complete quadriplegia to four-fifths strength throughout. His major problem remains a neurogenic bladder. He has no feeling. He's going to need a catheter the rest of his life. Well, once we started, we told them with our color therapy not to bother us, no more workup. Color brought my dad back. And now, once we got my dad home, I showed you the multi-wave oscillator. We used it twice on my father, and he started urinating on his own. Now, I don't sell any of these devices, so I'm not giving anybody here a pitch or I'm not selling anything. Yes, I'm selling books, but not this equipment. Two sessions with the multi-wave oscillator, my dad urinated on his own the rest of his life. Now, color is a whole hour presentation, multiple wave, rife, nemoscope. I am so sorry, I'm just kind of shotgunning this quick, but I will be at the conference. I am there, I'm gonna show a lot of these things. Um, the picture on the screen is little Grace Sherlow and Grace Sherlow had third degree burns over two thirds of her body. Now there's the back and then to the right is her back. Unbelievable, I, I have the original of this. After the first hour using Dinshaw's machine, this, mach this machine, she never had any pain and no skin grafts. This is really, a shame in this world that th this color system is not, that was written up in the Atlantic Medical Journal, 1926. Yeah, and one way for people, Steve, to actually kind of even relate to it, when you have jaundice, they put yellow. I mean, there are ways we do use color therapy, even in the hospital uh, today. Absolutely, Billy Rubin, infant liver syndrome, they're put under a blue light and the babies who don't get the blue light die. So when I give lectures to medical doctors, they go, oh, I don't, I don't know about that color. I go, doctor, what do you use for Billy Rubin? What we, they, they never will finish because they use a blue light. By the way, you know how it was discovered? It was crazy. The babies closest to the window with the yellow jaundice lived and the further into the room they died until I believe it was a nurse who said, gee, why are all these babies? And then they realized the light and it was the blue light in the spectrum. Well, we're made out of that wave. So we respond to the wave. Oh, of course, yes. Yeah, um, there was a thought that came It's you, Thinking of rays, can you actually explain a little bit about Tesla's purple ray? <laughs> Other than it was a device and a frequency, yeah, we've had purple ray machines. Um, and again, various frequencies have extremely profound effects is the best I can say. And of course, Tesla was the greatest inventor of all time. And he understood, he's got those famous quotes without free, I mean, if you know frequency, you have the secret to, to the universe and yeah. everything. And the violet ray, the violet ray tube, um, was used very much in the 20s and 30s, but it kind of fell out of 
favor. Why? It, I don't know. It came in a it came in a suitcase too, if I remember right. Yeah. And they used to use it a lot in beauty shops. Yeah, and now we use infrared. So when we think of color, I think everybody should kind of like think, oh yeah, well, we do use that. And yes. they use purple to get rid of viruses on on surfaces. And that's they even do that in hospitals. So I thought I'd at least throw that in there. So yeah, so you and I have been speaking about resonance and uh, this, of course, I'm going to be talking about the generation of sound. Um, what did the ancients do? I'm not going to get into it now, but yeah, okay. how did the ancients do it? That'll be part of my presentation on Thursday. And I'm just going to say also, imagine the museum where all of these things are available. You can see the yeah. sound working and all that stuff. So that's why that other picture on the side is. It's just to give you a sense. Wow, what if we had a museum and all that was available? And not only could you could witness it and go in and get go into different color waves and know exactly what it is. So, Steve, is this the other one we're not going to talk about because you're going to kind of more present it? Uh, no, that, uh, Giuseppe Gallicaris, uh, that, that is very interesting for people who have never uh, heard of him. Uh, he was a neurophysiologist, psychiatrist in Italy. He discovered a transport system that had nothing to do with the lymphatic the circulatory. Um, it is a system on the body that when it is stimulated, creates super sensorial abilities mm -hmm. where when you use these different uh, tubes there, those metals at different points on the body. And again, it's not the meridians, it's not the nervous system. When he made his presentation in the 1940s, the Catholic Church excommunicated him. The medical profession took his medical doctor. But when he died, the Soviet Union went and got virtually all of his papers, opened up all of their research institutes, which is why Russia was always ahead of the United States in psychic phenomena. Now, <laughs> the only thing that was written in English how many people have heard of Autobiography of a Yogi by Yogananda? In this footnote, he wrote about Caligaris. And to this day, I have never met one person, not one person who read that book, Yogananda, and knew who Caligaris was because they never read the footnote of what Yogananda had to say about uh, Caligaris. Okay, give it to, just out of curiosity, because that's not part of your thing. How does that go with um, the extra paranormal and phenomena? Well, when various points on the body, body are stimulated, it allows clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentience. And when various spots are agitated with those cylinders, somebody can see five kilometers, 50 kilometers, a thousand kilometers or in other dimensions. So it's like an upscale of the different dimensionalities of... It's, it's a pro, profound system mm. that we were very fortunate. I've secured five of the books. Uh, the Catholic Church excommunicated it because of the psychic part and the bookstores in Italy for a while were forbidden and the libraries had to take his books out but we have all of his books in Italian, and we we have those cylinders that were used. But gee, we only get an hour here. I only have an hour at the conference, and I give people their heads would explode. You know what? Here's the interesting part about the conference that is really fun. In the evening, there's a social, and the tables are wide open. The speakers are available, and you can walk up to Steve. You'll be at it. You'll be at a table. <laughs> Everybody's at a table. Everybody's, at, you know, and, and um, Steve Ellswick provides food. There's either a pizza bar or a taco bar or something going on during an evening where people sit down and relax and mingle. So this is unlike, other, you know, where people are kind of sequestered off in the corner. This is not a big conference, it, but it is, it is a really intimate one where you can go be hands on. And that's what makes it so amazing. So that's another reason to come. And it is four days. There's 28 speakers. 
So, and, and a lot of this time, well, for, and to Steve's benefit, my benefit and everybody else, um, somebody like Don Estes is coming. And Don Estes is going to show you the psychedelic aspects of the kaleidoscope of life where you can potentially go in and witness and have an experience. And he's going to speak to it. We've got to, to match Steve. We've got somebody like Robert Slovak coming and talking about the butt guy, the, um, the gut biome. So I think when we look at all of these interconnected things, um, there's quite a rich texture of things going on in the conference. So yeah, so, so it, it, it's not like you're only on, you'll be on all weekend. People will be coming up to you. You'll be, you'll, you know, the people that are meant to be there for you are just, you're just gonna, I don't know, it's gonna be great. And then people are come to the museum because the museum is yeah. in Sedona. And so anyway, this is a, just a, a vision of what it is. And we've got Five more minutes. You want to tell us a little bit about Manley Hall? I'm cheating in there. Yes. Well, Manley Hall, uh, I met him back in the 80s uh, because of it. I've been guided by dreams since I was 23 years old, including a dream which led me to the Rife microscope. And through a dream, Manley Hall allowed me to go not into just his library, but his personal vault. And in that vault, I copied... Um, rare alchemical books, which were not available at the time. You have and, a new book. You yeah. have a new book. And, and in this vault, I discovered a file that said material that arrived too late to the printer to be included in the secret teachings of all ages. He wanted that material, but it arrived too late. I've waited 40 years. I promised Mr. Hall I would never publish anything while he was alive. And he, he has passed quite a few years. And so I have published the unpublished papers that belonged in the, in the secret teaching of all ages. Um, I'm going to dash out and dash in. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So the one thing Steve didn't tell you, he, when he met Manley Hall, there were, he was in a hallway. He was in a class. And he asked a question and, man, and asked if anybody knew it. Steve was the one who knew it. And he wondered how long he'd been studying Manley Hall's work. And he said, never. He just was guided to go. And so because of his knowing, he was invited to the back vault because obviously he was some sort of extraordinary human who had I'm so a great <laughs> I, I, I view myself as a caretaker. I caretake. Dreams have led me all over the world, including getting telephone numbers, um, just calling the numbers, someone at the other side going, we're waiting for you, we have something. Um, and I've been very fortunate, Betty Lee Morales with the Nemoscope book, um, just meeting people for a very, very short time. Marcel Vogel, who was the one who said, how the heck did you get, when he died, he left a good portion of his library to me, which is incorporated here. So we're, we're caretakers. Yep. It, it, it's your work has been amazing. You're holding the space for the next generation. And well, maybe, that's why, maybe that's why I don't have hair, Karen. And I've, <laughs> I've got white eyebrows now. It's all blown out. It's I think the eyebrows come with age because mine, you know, and oh. then those whiskers that's sticking out. I don't know about that, Steve. Oh. I, I, you know, it's it's not just you. I still have okay. some hair. That makes me feel better. <laughs> I see where we've just we've just about filled our hour. Like we I did. said, I have a lot of neat things for for yeah. people to see, and I, I hope they'll come out um, on Thursday and, and see the presentation. Yeah. So thank you. Thank, thank you for coming on. Thank you for just at least diving in and um, showing so many amazing and actually things that work that we, you know, with, with everything sort of falling apart or not falling apart these days, there are solutions. And and it's not like they're they're not available. We can make yeah. them so. Steve, how'd we do? I thought you guys did great, you know. In our hour. And uh, I don't want people to be letting... Uh, Money be um, a hindrance to come to the conference, you know. Um, I, I think, you know, if, if God lays it on your heart to come, you should come. And uh, I, I encourage them to come. Like I said, you know, we're making a very affordable conference and plenty of hardware. I mean, just what you have right there, uh, 
could fill an entire conference, you know, quite bluntly, you know. Uh, we'll just have to give him a whole day one time. <laughs> I've, had, I've had whole days, and it's never enough. Yeah. It's, it's not the biggest problem that people are going to have when they come to conference is getting enough sleep. So I encourage you to sleep before you come and expect to have to crash a day or two afterwards because there's just so much information, so many people there, uh, and you're going to want to try to cram as much as you can in a, such a small amount of time. You know, I mean, just yes. And I'm a people person. I will interact with people. I, I love people and I love sharing. So uh, I will be available there for sure. Yeah. And, and, it's fun. It's fun. It's my favorite. It's fun. And I might want to mention this too, you know, that uh, free parking. You know, I don't know if I, everybody I seem to go now, they all want to charge you 30 bucks a night for parking, which is ridiculous, you know. Um, and, and I guess in L.A. they're going to make it uh, mandatory, even if you have a car or not. So it's getting pretty crazy. But there's free park in there. Uh, you got free Internet. You got a free breakfast. What more What more do you want? And you, you know? get snacks in the evening for social hour. Snacks, you know, these are more than snacks. I mean, yeah. uh, let me put it this way. In all the years I've had a conference, I've never had anyone starve to death. <laughs> no. So, so thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for being on here, Steve and uh, Karen. Um, and uh, if anyone has any questions, you know, uh, I've been kind of watching the, the, the comments here. Um, I think we're pretty good. I don't, I just think like, yeah. wow, ooh, they, somebody's saying you get a lot of coffee too. So there you go. <laughs> all, yeah. all right, guys, have a nice evening. And I look forward to seeing people and you guys at the conference. And okay. I'm going to send an update, a uh, little extra blurb uh, about what we're showing. Okay. And uh, once again, I just want to remind everyone, conferences, August 7th to 11th. My number's right there. Feel free to call. Um, and uh, check out our YouTube channel. And you all have a, a great evening. And we'll see you all next Sunday. Thank the you, Steve. Thank Steve, you guys. Steve, Bye. Steve. <laughs> Thank you all.